Howdy fellow wood gas addicts. I've got an interesting little update. Well, I hope it's interesting. <laughs> Promise not to doze off while this video is playing. I've been working on a new project here. I call it the Mix Master 9000. You may remember a video I put up a fair little while ago where I was talking about motoring, motorizing this valve so it was under computer control it could work its way back and forward. It occurred to me subsequently that this might just wear out with all that motion and start leaking, which is nay good. What I've done instead is I've added this little system. It uses four valves, electric solenoid valves. Each one, when it's activated, lets a certain amount of air into the engine. Uh, or to the mixing system, thereby allowing the computer to manage the rich, lean con uh, configuration of the fuel. Inside this box, the metering box I call it, I've got four of these little fellows. Each one is blocked off at the end with solder, and a little hole is drilled into one of these or along the length here. So the first one is a half millimeter hole in it. The next one has 0.7 and the next one 1.4 I think it is and the other one 2-ish. What that does is it lets the engine pull air through at a particular rate as set by these valves. The smaller one lets air through at one unit per minute the same. This one lets it through at two units per minute, four units per minute, eight units per minute. So let's say you wanted 10 units per minute of air coming in. The computer would activate this valve and that one. So you end up with two units plus eight units of air. The output from the valves is coupled, are, uh, is coupled into this mixing box, which then returns the air through this little hose into uh, can I even see it into the mixer arrangement for the engine. What it does essentially is this pipe which takes air out before the master control valve and this pipe here which injects it where is it after the manual mixer valve allows this system of relays and solenoids to essentially bypass this manual control valve. Under computer control, let's switch that computer on, <coughs> the system should be automatic. What it's doing there is it's waiting for me to switch from manual mode to auto mode. When I do that, you'll see this little light has come on. What that does at the moment, this little thing here, is it simulates as if the O2 sensor is plugged in. It allows me to finish the programming on the computer in this. So at the moment, what this is doing is it's applying power to what would be the heater in the O2 sensor, and it's giving it a 90 second period of heating to allow the oxygen sensor, if it was plugged in, to begin registering the fuel mix as it's perceived in the exhausting system. <coughs> what I've basically arranged here with these four valves in this metering system is a binary weighted 16 step air mix control system. So that is essentially adjusting this valve in 16 distinct positions, kind of like that. That's what it's doing the equivalent of, but without moving the valve. So in practice, the operator would set that valve to a happy position somewhere in the middle of the working range. Okay, what the computer has done now is it's completed the heating session and has begun receiving input, or actually acknowledging input, from the O2 sensor. This potentiometer here, for now, replaces the O2 sensor and allows me to set the apparent mixture strength. 
In the past you may remember a panel meter that rose and fell with mixture strength. I've replaced that with an LED bar graph. So as it starts to show signs of getting rich, the system begins adding air in an attempt to correct it. When it finally gets there, it starts taking air off in an attempt to find the sweet spot. Now let's say the mixture gets very rich. You'll notice correction occurs more quickly over the 16 steps available to the system. It slows down as the mixture gets leaner. It stops and then starts going back the other way in an attempt to return to a reasonably rich or at least uh, optimal operating condition. At times when the mixture gets very rich, like I'm not, this will quickly count up as rapidly as it can in an attempt to chase it down. What I've done is I've programmed this computer to behave in the same way as I've had to when manually operating this in response to the reader, uh, meter readings on the O2 sensor. So I found that I needed to go faster if it was very rich, moderate speed if it was moderately rich, and very slowly if it was just beginning to become rich. And uh, then of course start working back the other way to find that sweet spot. In this condition, where the mixture is lean, all those LEDs have gone out, all these relays are switched off and it's trying to take away as much air as possible, and it finds that it can't, it will send a pulse down this wire. That wire will be connected to the computer that you may have seen before in a previous video that occupies this spot here. The computer is responsible for receiving radio signals and activating the shakers. At the moment this is manual, but if I trigger that switch and wait for the camera to actually see, right, here we go. That's the shaker for the hopper causes an earthquake, shakes the gasifier big time. And if I activate the grate shaker, we, well, guess what? <laughs> Shake the grate, being a great shaker, ain't that great. What will happen, of course, is when the system does that, the mixture will suddenly get quite rich. Which, of course, the system will begin compensating for until it reaches that happy position where it's just on the edge of becoming rich, like I'm not. <laughs> so, that's the theory of how this thing works. Um, since building it, I haven't had an opportunity to start the engine, nor have I had a reason to, because something horrible has happened to the weather. The sun is shining, and I'm getting thousands of watts from my solar arrays. So, this has become somewhat redundant. Yeah at the time being. Uh, talking of inputs and outputs, there's another input here. There's a wire right... where is it? It's hard to spot with the camera. There it is. That wire there will be connected to the engine and will allow the engine to tell the computer whether it's running or not. So if I touch that wire, you'll see that the status indicator associated with that uh, part of the system has gone off. So when that happens, the computer will become aware of this and will enter that mode where it switches off the heater, goes into power saving mode, switches all the relay, uh, the servos off and saves about 40 watts of power. Uh, so if the engine is restarted again um, at some time later, the whole thing starts again. So switches on the heater for the uh, oxygen sensor and begins the count down for the 90 seconds. Starts the whole thing off again. Uh, so that's pretty much that in a nutshell. I'm looking forward to testing this to see whether I've got the theory anywhere right. As at the moment I don't know whether I've got the right gradient on this. There's a particular angle of attack that this will operate on for a given vacuum level on the engine. And um, I, I'm just hoping I've got that right. Now with that in mind, I'm also developing another version of this 
that uses a different method to achieve control. Uh, it will have a much wider operating spectrum than this does and should be easier for other folks to build. So if I can prove the theory, I'll quite happily release that on the intertubes so other folks may perhaps automate their systems to the point where all you have to do is put some gasoline granules in your tank and forget about it. Let the computer take control. Um, I've got good motivation for doing this. Yes. Let's see. Can I actually see that? don't know if it's focusing very well, but I've got 1,226 hours of runtime on this system. And um, I am obliged to come out to the machine every 15 minuten to shake the grate and uh, the hopper and adjust this to compensate for changes that occur over time. And uh, the novelty of that's kind of wearing off. So I'm hoping the computer will be able to do it for me. I'm pleased to report that my new automatic mixing system actually works. Need some adjustment, fine tuning so to speak, but it actually works. Let's have a look, eh? starting to lean out now. If it leans too far it will fall over. Now the system is trying to compensate by taking air away. It's starting to get richer again, and it's reached equilibrium. Well, sort of. first ever live test of the automatic mixer um, and you can hear the excitement in my voice that's about as excited as I ever get ah. anyway this works surprisingly well considering that well it's never been tested before but what I do need to do is make it so as it can handle a wider range it's got a gradient that's just not quite steep enough so some adjustment is necessary in the metering system, but 
I think I'm onto something here. At last, I shall have an automagic gasificator. Yippee! Excitement levels are now dangerously high. Just a little follow-up from yesterday and last night with my experience here. Um, this actually worked quite well. That was its very first ever run with an engine. Um, now, inside this computer package is this little chip. Well, one just like it anyway. It's about an inch long, little big microprocessor manufactured and sold by microchip, uh, a company called Microchip. Very cheap, about two dollars. Does great work too. What I'll need to do now is make a change to the metering box, as I call it. Um, this metering box contains four air jets, each one capable of emitting uh, a certain amount of air to the system. Um, it looks like I'll need to go through them all and enlarge the holes in them in order to give this system a wider range. Ideally, the system would have a range equivalent to about, say, half a turn of this. This is a five turn valve, so I'm doing half a turn, which means it's traveling one tenth of its range all up. But what I'm finding uh, with the existing port sizes in this is that I'm getting about that much range and that's just near enough so uh, that's uh, the next little job to be done on this little thing and I think once I've done that I'll be able to achieve the level of automation that I've been aiming for a few other little things need to be done I need to finish off the battery charging system and also allow that same battery charging system to inform the computer that the engine is actually running. So further changes to the software in this will allow it to become aware of the engine's status, thereby fully automating this so as I can leave it in automatic mode and it will simply change between auto and manual modes based on what the engine is doing, so it saves me having to uh, operate the switch, because that's really hard work doing this. That's very hard work indeed, and I really would rather avoid having to work if I possibly can. Eh. Alrighty, boys and girls. Um, here's hoping this thing actually works exactly as I want. It's looking pretty good so far, and if folks are interested perhaps we can have us a discussion on developing this sort of thing for everyone else's gasifier. Cheers and beers, canary ears.